Excuse me, miss. You dropped this. Wow, it sure is a pretty compact. You wouldn't want
want to lose it. It's from your mother, isn't it, Laura? <laughs> By the way, were you having a nightmare or something? You were mumbling and talking in your sleep. Are you all right? <laughs> well, I don't fly too well myself. Shadow the final destroyer. 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 For the sake of creation, all must be from chaos unto order. Shadow the final destroyer. Shadow the final destroyer. <laughs> oh, here. Oh. Final Destroyer, the Great Shadow is coming. Pray and celebrate the coming of the Final Destroyer, our Lord, the Shadow. <laughs> ah! Shadow, the Final Destroyer. Shadow, the Final Destroyer. Shadow, Shadow, the Final Destroyer. Shadow. Be quiet. Be quiet, I said. Final destroyer has come. The shadow has arisen. Destroyer, the final destroyer. Shadow, shadow, the final destroyer.
finally came to. Ten days have passed since that terrible accident. But I only found you the day before yesterday. You were lying in the snow, and I brought you here. You've been asleep for two days, you know. I, I just can't figure it out. How did you manage to stay alive for eight days? Looks like you were eating regularly, too. So strange. I found you pretty far away from the crash site. Um, do you remember anything? Kimberly. Kimberly Fox. I'll uh, talk to you more later. You must be tired. Seems like you were having a lot of nightmares, too. You all right? I'm Parker. Parker Jackson. You two must be survivors of that plane crash. Are you hurt? Don't touch me. Get out of here. Just a minute. What, what do you think you're doing? Get the hell out of here. Wait. I haven't blossomed yet. Blossomed? 
come on. Didn't it look like flowers were blooming from that monster? You both saw it, and there's more just like it out there. He's not the only one. What exactly was that thing? Who the hell knows? Some of them look like they might have been passengers from the crash. But the monsters got to them. And as you can see, they turn into... Monsters? Yeah. They blossom. They've turned into monsters, too. Get out. Look, I, I, like I said... I'll shoot. I swear I'll shoot. Look, unless we work together, we won't get out of here alive. I will shoot! All right, I'll go. Now. All right. I get it. But listen up. And listen good. You may be armed. But there's only one way to tell whether someone's human or not. And that's by the color of their blood. Those things bleed green. But to see any blood, you've got no choice but to shoot. And you've got to do it fast because they'll be on you in a flash. We don't know much of anything yet. Should we shoot everything that looks like this creature? And what if it looks human and bleeds green? There may be monsters that bleed red for all we know. What are we supposed to do then? We don't know whether everything that looks like a monster always has green blood. Maybe some are still human inside. Maybe they can revert back to humans again. We don't have any answers. All I can say is, survive. Get out of this godforsaken place alive. Be careful, both of you. Watch your back. I'm sorry. I wish... If I could... Damn it. I'm sorry about that. We're both in the same boat, I guess. I just don't know what to do, or how to do it. Maybe that man feels the same way. Everyone who survived feels that way. They had no idea what to do. Maybe you're better off than others, not remembering anything. Hey, do you remember anything, anything about Janny? Jenny, the little girl I found you with. You were both lying there, in the snow, and you were trying to protect her. Oh, I brought you both back here, but she wandered off when I wasn't looking. She may know something about you, and she may still be around here, just hiding. Maybe you could take a look outside. You won't be able to walk too far in the snow. And the area is surrounded by forest and a sheer drop, but... I'll wait here. Be careful, okay?
You really can't remember those eight days after the crash. I wonder if Jenny was with you the whole time. Well, I'm sure it'll come back to you in time. Be careful out there. You think it's cruel? I did too at first. But you know, I spoke with this Norwegian hunter in a tavern, and he said even rabbits and mice have killer instinct, and that there's no such thing in this world as absolute prey or an absolute predator. He also said that it's an energy, kind of a focused awareness that binds life together. So. I guess we better stay on our guard at all times to survive. To feed the flame of instinct with the fuel of life, was the way he put it. The reason why consuming meat gives the body strength is because the urge to kill and the energy of life embodies the flesh. <laughs> or something like that. I, well, I guess what I'm trying to tell you is to eat a lot and get better soon. <laughs> Come on, aim straight and take a shot. Right, you got it. Um, shoot that way. Um, there's two more over there. Wow, you're way better than me. I think you've got what it takes to be a great hunter. You can put the game you caught in this portable cooker. It automatically cleans and cooks the meat. So you can eat whenever you're hungry. It's pretty good. 
much better than stale bread. I'm gonna go get a little rest now.
birthday, dear Grandpa. Happy birthday to you. I hope you have a good birthday, Grandpa. Hmm? I can't wait to see you again this Christmas. I love you. <laughs> Hi. I guess you didn't find Jenny. Where could she be? There's nothing else around here except the stone hut. And I already looked there. There's the crash site, but I don't think you should go there. There's only... You'll only see things of the brutal aftermath. The snow must have given those poor people a proper burial by now. If you are going to the stone hut, use this key to open the cabinet inside. I locked it because I didn't want the monsters to get any of the weapons in there. Be careful. I'm tired. I'm gonna rest a little bit longer.
Oh, hi. I feel a little bit better. Well, looks like you've been to the stone hut. What's that? Brought the radio back. It won't work, you know. I try to get the news through the radio, but we're too high up for that. A new slash from the world of the living won't do as much good anyway. But you know what? I got an idea. <laughs> I think there's something here that we can both use. Want to hear it? It's called... <laughs> Counting the Roses. I, I actually wrote the lyrics, <laughs> believe it or not. <sighs> I'm a poet. <laughs> Someone who happened to read a poem of mine wrote and recorded this tune. I even got a letter once from someone who heard the song. Poetry to me, it's like, it's like creating my own microcosm. A sanctuary of comfort. It was probably, no, it must have been the end of another sad day when I wrote this poem. I, I saw this place. It was pure white. As far as the eye could see. And I... I was counting roses. There's yellow and red. Hundreds of roses, so beautiful. You could lose yourself in them, in this shiny white world. Oh, I wanted so much to go there. A warm, gentle place. <laughs> Silly, huh? There's one thing I could say for sure about my life. Hmm. I had a second chance. I wouldn't want to be born as myself again. No way. Anything but that. I don't want to go through it again. Not my father's accidental death. Not my mother's suicide. None of it. At first, I tried escaping through drugs. Then, I learned to create my own little world through poetry. It was a place where there was no memory of my parents' death. And I could just be happy, you know. I recently went through some of my poems and I realized something. Every one of my hundreds, no, thousands of poems are so sad. The player ate my tape. Great. We can't listen to the radio, and now we have no tape player. Here. You can have it. <laughs> Consider it a gift. A broken tape player and a pulverized poem of mine. How depressing. And I thought a little music would be good for our morale. You know, there's something else I don't understand. It's been 10 days since the accident. So why hasn't any help arrived? Can you remember anything? I mean, anything at all from the last eight days. You must have been with someone else. I couldn't make it out, but you were calling someone's name. I wonder what could have happened to Janny. If we could only find her, you know, she might know about this other person. 
I'm sure of it. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. I just wonder how we're gonna get out of here.
is about Canada from the Prealis Star Cluster on red high heel shoes. The turbulence is the original ETA at St. Charles. Autopilot engaged in the galley right on schedule. Bring your seat up to the floor. Right this is right. Then I'll just stop right in front of you. Ah! a snowmobile. I bet we can make it out of here as long as we have that. I don't think the monsters can attack us while we're riding a snowmobile. But we don't have much gas left. Just enough to get back to the cabin. Yeah, we'll need to find some gasoline somewhere before we can go anywhere else. 
Let's just go back for now. It's not much, but our luck is finally beginning to turn for the better. Right? Laura? Hmm? <laughs> Surprised? <laughs> you never told me your name. But that must be your name. This is yours, isn't it? I found it by the bed. It's engraved. To Laura from your mother, Lucy. Does that bring anything back? Lucy. That's your mother's name. Does it ring any bells? C c can you remember... Can you remember her? What's she like? What does she look like? I bet she was very kind to you. When I found you lying in the snow, you were holding it as if it were so precious. During those two days, you were unconscious. You held this close and kept calling out someone's name. A man's name. Laura? Laura? Laura, are you right? Laura! Laura. Laura. Are you all right? I'm glad you came too. Here you are. You don't want to lose it. It's a precious gift from your mother. Are you hurt? You don't seem to have any serious injuries. You should be on your feet in no time. Do you remember the plane crash? Our plane went down after being hit by a meteorite. The strange thing is, your compact started to glow just moments before impact. And I had a vision of a burning rock colliding with the jet. Without thinking, I grabbed your arm, and the next thing I knew, we were on this mountain. I managed to carry you down to this small cabin. You remember me, don't you? I'm David, David Brenner. Laura, 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 can you hear me? I was afraid you would sleep for another two days straight. <laughs> I was just getting used to having a friend. Don't leave me alone again, okay? Come on, let's go back to the cabin. Who knows? Maybe we'll find Janny fast asleep in bed.
to Laura. The best possible friend gained in the worst possible circumstance. I'm feeling much better, thanks to you. I've gone to look for gas, hoping that you will recall your past. Very, very soon, Kimberly.
Hi, Jenny. It's Grandpa. Do you recognize me? <laughs> we can see each other soon. I look forward to Christmas. I'm sure you've gotten bigger. I'll bet you get to see the grand aurora in the sky when you go. I'll get a cherry pie for your birthday. Since you love cherry pie so much, to eat under the aurora sky. I'll be waiting, sweet child. Sweet, sweet child. Looks like it's morning. As far as I can tell, it's still snowing. Oh! Ow. No, I'm all right. Oh! Wow. It just hurts a little. Oh. Looks like I took a beating. I probably won't be able to walk anytime soon. How are you doing? Good, good. Your color's coming back. I'm sure you're gonna be just fine. The snow's so beautiful. You know, I actually grew up in these parts. <laughs> when I lived here, snow was nothing but a dreary pain. But now, now it seems... Oh, this flower? This is a Canadian flower. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it as a good luck charm. My mother used to press flowers, I remember. I wish I could bring you luck and protect you. But I... How can I? <laughs> Why?
Laura? Laura! Oh, Laura. I am so sorry. I never should have left you alone. Are you alright? I remember there was a trailer in front of what looked like a mining facility. That's where I went. Unfortunately, the gas tank was empty. There was nothing left. Laura? There was nothing else you could have done, please. Please don't blame yourself. It may have seemed that that thing was Janny's grandfather, but he'd already blossomed. Laura? There's no use thinking about it now. We should concentrate on finding Janny and getting out of here. Look, it'll be completely dark soon. I'm going out again to look for gasoline. You should rest a little. Mm? Oh, this. It's um, medicine. Just medicine. Would you like some? It's called Linda. It's very popular these days. It helps me relax and somehow seems to make everything crystal clear. I guess it sort of frees you. <laughs> Maybe it'll even bring your memory back. Can't live without this stuff. <laughs> I'm a real mess, aren't I? So awful to that guy, Parker. And he just saved our lives. If we'd been with him, maybe Janny would be. Wait a second. That's his name. David. That's right. That's the name of the guy you called out in your sleep over and over again. Oh, yeah. I, I remember you saying. David, David, thank you so much, David. Uh, does that sound familiar? Um, do, do you remember a guy named David? Maybe he's the one who helped you. Thank you so much, David. That's gotta be it. He must be lost along with the other passengers from the crash. He must be lost along with those eight days of memory you've lost. You were with him after the accident. You got lost, so maybe he's still out there somewhere, waiting for you to come back. Was he your boyfriend? Your husband? David. David, thank you so much, David. That's exactly what you said. Oh, if only Janny were here, then we'd know something. Hey, don't worry. We'll figure things out. The first thing we need to do is find gas for the snowmobile. If you feel up to it, you can help me look. Oh, there must be some gas around here somewhere. Here, take this. It'll be dark soon. Use this to light your way. I'll go on ahead. It would be great to meet David again, wouldn't it?
Okay. I said okay already. Get in there. <gasps> Time to talk, you bastard. What's in here? What the hell are you hiding in here? I, I don't know nothing. I swear. For Christ's sake, put the shotgun down. I swear I don't know anything. Larry and I are not terrorists. He started it. Talking nonsense about how he was going to resurrect the Shadow. How the hell was I supposed to know what he was talking about? Shadow? Larry's on some bad stuff. He's been hanging out with this weird sorcerer, going on and on about how they're going to build a perfect world. This creep's got us on the same stuff. This Linda crap. And it's like, you're gone. You see weird stuff, like a huge seed stuck inside ice that shines. You know what I'm saying? When I saw it, I just knew it was the shadow. No one told me. I just felt it. So I really don't know anything. All my buddies got killed in that crash. And Larry's turned into one of those damn monsters. I don't know if that means he's dead or alive, man. He even tried to eat me, you know that? What am I supposed to do now? Come on. You gotta help me. I don't know anything. 
nothing at all. All this happened because of Larry and Linda. You really don't know anything. Yes. I swear. Hey, you and me, we can get out of here together, huh? You're one tough broad. I like that. I've always had a thing for strong women, too. Hey, say, why don't we pop some Linda and do a little of this, huh? <laughs> Come on. Satisfaction guaranteed. <laughs> Ain't no way any monster's gonna eat me. But a good-looking woman like you, that's different. <laughs> What the hell? You two? No. No! Come on! Don't! Please! Oh my god! No! No!
Laura! You're awake. Good. You're okay. Jenny's okay, too. <laughs> what happened exactly? I was just sitting here worried because you were gone so long. Then all of a sudden, the two of you just fell out of the sky. A bright golden light lit up the entire room, and then boom! See? Look up there. What are you, anyway? A witch, maybe? A good one, I hope. Maybe you have teleporting abilities or something. Well, that's one more thing we can't figure out. At least we have Janny back and the gas you found. So we could take the snowmobile and get out of here. I ran across a small valley while you were out, and I think we can make it if we push the snowmobile to the limit. <laughs> Scared? Don't worry, I'll drive. Come on, are you ready? Seems like there's more monsters around now, and it's getting colder. Especially in here. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you, young lady? Huh? Laura and I were worried sick about you. I'm sorry, Kim. I knew Grandpa's house was nearby, so I tried to go find him, but I couldn't. Where's my Grandpa? I want to go see him. I want to see my Grandpa. Do you know where he is? I promised I'd come see him, and he promised he'd show me the northern lights. And magic tricks. It's my birthday soon. I want to celebrate with Grandpa. Alara, uh, don't cry. There's nothing you could have done. You know how things are. You're not to blame. But what we are responsible for is making sure this little girl is safe. Right? Jenny? Jenny, do you remember the first time I saw you? Uh-huh, I remember. Jenny, you were with Laura, right? Uh-huh. Was there anyone else with you two? Anyone else? A man. No, no one else. There wasn't anyone else ever. After the airplane crashed, I was all alone for a long, long time. And then Laura found me. Uh -huh. Was Laura with a man? Someone named David? Uh-uh. Laura was all by herself, just like me. We were walking. Then Laura suddenly went to sleep. So I went to sleep, too. Next thing I know, we're here with you. Oh, so when you woke up, you were here? Uh-huh. And so were you, Kimmy. So... Where are your mom and dad? My dad went away a long time ago, so I went on the airplane with my mom, but she... She fell asleep. Fell asleep? The airplane crashed in the snow, and I got really cold. My mommy held my hands like she always does. My mommy's hands are so warm. But her hands kept getting colder and colder. I told her that her hands were cold, but she said it was because of the snow and that everything would be okay. Then she kept getting colder and colder. So I tried to warm up her hands like she always did, but it didn't work. She said it would be okay and we just held hands. 
and mommy went to sleep. Oh, Jenny. I'm sorry, Kimmy. That's why I didn't want to go to bed. I was scared of going to sleep. So I tried to find Grandpa instead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay, Jenny. You don't have to be scared anymore. Will I fall asleep and go away too? Not you, Jenny. You're going to be perfectly all right. Because you've got Laura and me. It isn't going to be easy. But remember this, Jenny. Huh? You can never give up hope. Hope? Yes, hope. It's the most important thing anyone can have in life. To believe. To keep believing and never give up. Not ever. To have a bright light burning in your heart. As long as you believe. That light will grow stronger and brighter to light your way. Oh, I understand. Grandpa always says, Jenny, even if bad things happen, have faith in tomorrow. That's right, Jenny. You're so strong. Uh-huh. Hope. I know about that now. Grandpa taught me a lot of things. Jenny, you're a very smart girl. You understand, don't you, that you can't see your mother ever again? I'm afraid not. Your mother had to go to sleep to be safe so she could protect you forever. Oh. She was a wonderful person, honey. I know. You have to survive no matter what, Jenny. For your mother's sake. Okay, Kimmy. Mora, Kimmy, can I ask you something? What's that? Hmm? Can I call you and Laura mommy? Oh, sure you can. <laughs> You're so warm. Come on, Laura, Jenny, let's get going on the snowmobile. We have a valley to cross. And Laura has to find this David guy and... I need to apologize to Parker if we ever run into him. Let's go.
Hello? Hello? Doesn't look like anyone's home. Let's go in. Really dark in here. Can you find a light switch somewhere? Oh, here it is. Hmm, I guess there's no one here. I wonder if it's all right just to take some things. Laura. Hmm? Could you search this room and see if there's anything useful? I thought I saw another light ahead, a yellow one. I'm gonna go check it out. And Janny, you come with me. Okay. All right. We'll be back as soon as we finish checking it out. You're not scared to be alone, are you? <laughs> We'll be right back.
Please don't. What do you mean by that? You say amusing things. <laughs> Help. Hmm. Help, huh? I bet all the people you victimized until now pleaded for their lives in the same way, huh? Stop! Please! Help! Pitiful. Help! Shh! You're hurting my ears. Shut up, will you? My head hurts. It's pounding. Don't shout. Do I have to beg, huh? Ah, it's Linda. You want to take some? This stuff's different from the usual stuff they sell. It's more potent and really works. You don't need any, because you're going to die soon anyway. Or are even monsters scared of death? I guess it doesn't really matter, huh? It doesn't matter what happens to you, because you're not human anyway. Are you? You're not human. You're wrong. <laughs> You say such crazy things. What's not true? I saw you with my own two eyes. What wasn't true about how you mutated into that... that thing? How you attacked my father. How you ate him! Ate him! You're wrong. Liar! You're disgusting. That's Go on, true. why don't you show yourself? Go ahead and blossom into your sick, disgusting, real self. Right now! Come on! Who's there? Oh, who do we have here? Do come and join us. Isn't that nice? We have company. Do you blossom into a pretty flower too? Come on, show me. I want to see. <laughs> oh, let's conduct an experiment, shall we? Yes, an experiment. You know, a test on both of you. Should I shoot first? It's really simple. See, I take this pistol and bang, I shoot your foot. Bang! And if I see green blood, you lose. Bang! Ah! If I shoot you in the head, you won't be able to move. And if there's red blood, I guess I'll just have to untie the rope. Red blood proves you're human, you see? But if you bleed green... You know what happens. Bang! <gasps> I'm talking about you! Yes, you! Do you hear me? <laughs> How could you do that to my father? I saw you! I saw you! You took my father and... Experiments are fun. I want to see you turn into a monster. <laughs> ah, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Look, look, I'm going to shoot you now. Bang! <laughs> I knew I was... 
was right. Now I'll show you. This is for what you did to my father. are supposed to be totally different things. Why is this happening to me? I'm sorry. Did she hurt you? No! <laughs> Don't come near! You shouldn't see this. All right. I don't know what's what anymore. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> there was a storage facility just ahead, and I saw it there too. My own body. <laughs> Talk about freaky. I mean, whoever really had to walk over their own dead body? I didn't think I'd end up killing myself, but I guess it's better than being killed by the other me.
Laura. You saved my life. I guess she's a clone, huh? Certainly looks just like me. Gives me the creeps. I guess they have the ability to replicate the exact physical appearance of their victims. Oh. <laughs> Do you think I'm... <laughs> Don't worry, I'm human. You can't clone a person's mind. I suppose they grow at an accelerated rate from a DNA sample. A brainless Xerox copy. I guess if they're capable of a real conversation, they're probably not a clone. But they do learn pretty fast. Did you notice how that one could talk a bit? It was mostly mimicking, but in the end, maybe you can only go by the color of blood. It just seems so sinister. Hey, Laura. You do believe me, don't you? say that I blame you. I bit the inside of my cheek. It's hard for me to even know what I am anymore. With all the crazy things going on around here. You end up suspecting yourself of the worst things. Gotta snap out of it, though. Come on, Jenny. Let's go check out the next room. Okay. sleep well knowing there's three of us. <sighs> it's tough trying to go to sleep by yourself. With no good memories to fall back on, it's like... Like the night clings to you. The tides of night surging in, thick as tar. Cutting you off from everything. Leaving you all alone in the universe. take refuge with these drugs. <laughs> to tell you the truth, the medicine is the reason I was on that plane. The room was so thick with sticky, suffocating darkness that night. I thought I'd drown. I took my medicine, and that's when I saw it. It wasn't a trip. It was kind of a vision. A vision of a landscape. And after that, I could see it almost every day whenever I took a dose. I knew I was being called there. And then I saw the place where this drug originated from, in a newspaper. The article was about Linda, how it was extracted from a type of lichen only found in the tundra of northern Canada. It mentioned that Linda triggered psychosis and aggression in some people, and that several violent murders in the past few years were committed by perpetrators who had taken Linda, and that even many acts of cannibalism had been reported. The story went on about the relationship between human aggression and instinct, but I couldn't take my eyes off the photograph. I was mesmerized by it. It was exactly what I seen in my vision. The same landscape. And that's why I got on that plane. Of course, you know the rest. <sighs> Laura, do you remember anything yet? Your mother and that compact. And... That David guy, 
he could be out there, still waiting for you. That David guy. Do you remember anything yet? Laura. Remember anything? <sighs> Laura. Anything? Laura, do you think that guy Parker's still alive? I was so unfair to him. I'd really like to apologize to him. I misjudged him. Yeah, you want to go get some sleep? It'll be dawn in a few hours. And the days are very short around here anyway. I hope tomorrow's a good day. Today wore me out. Oh, sorry. I guess I dozed off. Hey, um, y you should take this. You'll need it if you're gonna go up to the other building. Just jiggle the lock a bit, and the door will open. There's some sort of storage facility there, but oh, it's too cold to stay for long. Not that there's much there except a lot of junk and a hatch on the floor. Uh, the hatch seems to lead down to a cellar, but it was frozen shut. The building's just up the hill. There's a large yellow lamp, but be careful because it's very dark along the way. Take the snowmobile if you want. Well, good night. Uh,
Ah, oh, Linda. Listen. Do you hear that? Yes, dear. So, this is the sound of death. Oh, what I hear now is that faint whisper, the sound of all life coming to an end. Earth is dying. The sound is so bittersweet. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't think I really understand. No, dearest. You understand much more than I do about everything. If you say so. Linda, I'm so happy that the two of us can be together at this moment. <gasps> Who's there? Is someone there? Is that you, David? No, couldn't be. So, we have a visitor on our last night. I don't know what you want, but don't come any closer. Please, I don't want anyone to see me in this debilitating condition. You know what I mean, don't you? A monster has gotten me. Oh, I'm still alive, but I'm beginning to change. I'm transforming into a monster myself. Linda, this may be a suitable end for someone like myself. No matter what happens, you are still you. Linda, I remember everything so clearly about the night we first met. So do I, dear. The stars were so beautiful. As they are tonight. Ah, oh, if I close my eyes, I can see the stars the way they were that night. How did I stray so far from that to become the madman that I am? You are no such thing, my dear. Yes, I was mad to have turned you into this. No. I'm very sorry, but please, keep your distance. This is how I want to meet my fate with my beloved wife under the stars. You probably heard, but many people in the outside world call me a mad scientist. It's true, but only insofar as this planet itself is mad. I was consumed, obsessed with a desire to see the moment of death for this cruel, savage world. I was nothing more than another doomsday monger, and didn't even know it. In the ten years since both our sons grew up and left home, I've known nothing else. My obsession cost me every cent of the profits earned from refining an indigenous lichen. Then, finally, my hard work and devotion produced tangible results. It was two years ago, while studying eclipses and old sundials, that I realized the truth about Stonehenge. By mapping the light and shadow patterns of Stonehenge, then computing them against the position of the stars, I came to the conclusion that Stonehenge had been used to predict solar eclipses. And as I made further progress, I finally discovered that Stonehenge was actually created to predict a specific day, the final day of all days. The end of everything. This discovery shook me to the very core. For 30 years, I had waited for the apocalypse, and with that knowledge within my grasp, my mind recoiled in horror. Earth was about to die. Along with everything in it, was this what my heart truly desired? I christened the day, the Great Eclipse, and tried to pinpoint the exact time of its occurrence. By then I had changed my mind, I wanted to save this world, and needed to know when the end would come and how it would occur. Unfortunately, 
It took more than a year and a half for the computer to calculate the answer. It was only three days ago that I learned that the Great Eclipse would fall on December 25th in the year 2000, on Christmas Day. But who would listen to the ravings of a madman? I sent for my older son, a special agent with the FBI, but apparently he could not make it in time. Who would have guessed such a thing? A shower of meteorites touching off a pandemic of mutations, people turning into plant-like monstrosities. We are being consumed. The entire planet is being cannibalized. The Great Unknown has always been with us throughout our time on this planet, let alone in the far reaches of space. This day was deduced and recorded in stone around the dawn of history. But we of the modern age choose to remain ignorant. For all our great learning, all we can hope to understand is how much we do not know. By limiting our concerns to those of humanity alone, we have lost sight of the stars. We have no memory of our beginnings and will perish unaware in the end. All we could do was briefly glimpse into the chasm of time. I have a favor to ask of you, stranger. Would you please commit us and everything here to flames and ashes? Destroy all traces of my work. There is nothing more I can do, absolutely nothing. What good will a warning be to a new civilization that is sure to evolve in tens of millions of years? What little humanity I had left was taken by those creatures. At least allow me the dignity to choose my own end. Please, break the glass by your side and get the flamethrower. You must put an end to all you see here. Since that time, 
we share the same starry skies. Laura, I, I'm all right. I'm not sleeping. I was just thinking about my father. He works in an observatory near here. I was going to see him. He wrote me a letter out of the blue last week. And for the life of me, I cannot figure out why. But I thought, this time, this time I can finally do something for my family, you know? My father and I didn't get along. I've only seen him a few times since I left home. And I couldn't protect my mother. Maybe this is justice for being so damned selfish and leaving my kid brother to face it all alone. Why am I... I don't know why I thought of him at a time like this. But I guess I may never see them again. Not like this. Not in the... Oh, not in the condition I'm in.
Laura, Laura Party. I am the Great Mother. You must awaken and take up arms again, my child. Prepare yourself with renewed strength and courage for the coming battle between all mankind and the Shadow. I command you in the name of the Great Mother, the giver of all life, guardian of the Earth. cabin but you just fell out of the sky what the hell is going on so that's what you've been up to well anyway I'm Glad you're all right. I was kind of worried to tell you the truth. What happened to your friend, that pretty, rather strong-willed woman you were with? She hasn't, you know, blossomed or anything, has she? Huh? Hi. Laura, I'm so relieved I found you. I knew it was you. I saw a yellow glow out there, and Janny thought it might be you. So we followed it here, and well, here you are, and... Hey, wait a second. I was just helping her for crying out loud. Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> I had this dream, Laura. You were talking to this lady. Um, she seemed like a really nice lady. Isn't that strange? So Janny woke me up, and we went outside. We saw this yellow light. We also found a large house over there. There's smoke coming from the chimney, so maybe there's someone inside. We'll go on ahead. Hold on, Janny. Come on. Uh. Hey, wait a minute. You lay a finger in her, and you'll have to deal with me. Look, I'm not a...
Hmm. Laura, is that right? What was that like just now? Don't tell me you made some kind of alien contact. Or was it something more along the lines of the divine? To tell you the truth, though, I was looking out the window during that hijacking fiasco, and... How could you admire the view at a time like that? Well, the sky looks so beautiful. Oh, please. You really thought that looking at the view from the window was more important than it hijacking? Kind of. But the point is, I saw something a few minutes before the explosion. Saw what? A yellow light. The same light that Laura came down in, only much, much bigger. A huge curtain of light appeared from the other side of the ocean, then grew until it enveloped everything. It was almost as if the light was shielding the planet. Oh, spare me. You think you saw God or some planet-sized guardian angel? Actually, I work for a legitimate organization that studies things not too far removed from that. C-E-T-I, right? How'd you know? Center for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. It's pretty famous as far as bands of deluded UFO-crazed loonies go. You're, uh, showing off one of their caps right now, genius. I'm not showing off anything. Besides, I'm an engineer. Speaking of which, I'm pretty handy. Like, I didn't see you pushing that bucket of bolts down the hill. That's a different story. <laughs> My team is currently studying the underlying causes of why the dinosaurs became extinct 65 million years ago. What? Maybe you think a flying saucer caused this, too. No. We're talking meteors here. Meteors? Two major fragments from a meteor impacted on this planet. One hit the Yucatan Peninsula. The other struck northern Canada. You know what? I also think that a meteor caused our plane crash. So, you're saying that an asteroid took care of the dinosaurs, and now they're after us? In a sense, yes. I can't help thinking that these events are the will of the cosmos. A warning, even a punishment, directed at the dominant species on this planet. We're doing our best to follow the fate of the dinosaurs, and the powers that be are trying to... Kind of new agey, aren't we? Here, try the chemical equivalent. Drugs. I don't recommend it. I wouldn't take anything you did recommend. Anyway, I'm more concerned about how we're gonna get out of here than in your thesis. Like I said, those medias from 65 million years ago have everything to do with what we're seeing now. Oh, Laura, you're done eating. Sorry, we've been talking nonsense. Ta hmm. Oh, by the way, there's some weird guy upstairs but he won't open the door. Every time I knock, he just shouts that he's practicing and he, he keeps playing the piano. Oh, oops. <laughs> I guess I should stop gabbing like someone and finish my food. Jenny's asleep in the next room. Mm.
Mother? Is it you? Well, guess not. Go away! I don't know who you are or what you want, but I have to play this song. Right! Practice, 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 practice. Do you understand? Now leave me alone! Look, isn't there anything else you can tell me? You may be the key to uncovering the relationship between what's happening now and what happened to the dinosaurs. Hey, what'd you do that for? She can't remember anything. Why don't you just leave her alone? Sorry, I didn't know. If you like aliens so much, I can introduce you to some I know. My mother was abducted by aliens. Really? When did it happen? Was it an isolated event or were there recurrences? I was just kidding. Not too bright, are you? I got you bright. Come on, let's leave Captain Cosmos here alone and get some rest. <laughs> Aren't you even a little bit interested? The meteor that eventually killed off the dinosaurs and the one that hit this time. If what we're looking at here is the final wake-up call, the human race could be... <laughs> I guess I'd better shut up before she throws something else at me. And upstairs, not much fun to talk to, huh? I guess we should be grateful that he's letting us use his house. He must be tired. Try and get some rest. Mm.
What the hell do you think you're doing? You shouldn't take that stuff. Who are you to tell me what I can and can't do? I know I don't have any right, but I just want you to take control of your life. Spare me the speeches. You've got to understand, it's wrong to give yourself over to these chemicals. You won't be yourself anymore. As if anyone cares. Well, if it makes you feel any better, well, I do. You can't just drift in a narcotic dream and call it life. You're bartering yourself away for a make-believe world, paying with pain, yours and others. So what's the difference between that and how those pathetic monsters exist? Fine. There's not much chance that I'll make it out of here anyway. And even if I did, I'd just be alone again. In the dark. I'd rather turn into a monster and not have to think or remember or feel anything anymore. Don't say things like that. I'm so sorry. Don't bother. For all your fancy talk, you're just like any other man. All you need is an excuse to start hitting. That's not true. I just want to help. I only want to make you feel safe. You're... I... Morning. Sorry you had to see me at my worst again. I know he's right, but I just can't seem to act normal around men. I feel like such a, such a wreck. Uh, are you going out too? Well, be careful. I'll stay here. Okay?
there I see 
You're the final visitor prophesized in this book. <laughs> Stay and listen to what I have to say about Knife's prophecy. Have you ever heard of William Knife? Last year, he prophesied in his book that a holy figure who oversees the balance of all things would soon come and serve the people responsible for all wrongdoings. <laughs> Do you know what I'm speaking of? I'm talking about that meteorite that hit the northern mountain that gave off a golden hue. Ah, to protect this turning star from the crimson shadow, and awaken from the folds of time, an ancient lord of destruction. <laughs> Only then will hope lie with a child of destiny, born on both shores of history. <laughs> terrible, terrible things. A golden flush tinted the sky, and on that northern mountain, fearfully known as Death Mountain, fell the meteor. Thus, the prophecy is fulfilled, and you are possibly... No, I ought not ask. It is not sanctioned to involve an outsider in this zealotry. Hence, go safely, my daughter. So a woman did indeed appear, in the light of three remaining candles. Tis very fortuitous. <laughs> Perhaps too much so. If all is according to the book, you would be the child of destiny, born on both shores of history. However... Destiny's child is she who stands before us, born on both shores of history and fated to be here at this moment.
to see you. So <sighs> glad. I just woke up and you are gone. And Kimmy's gone too. Hmm? I don't know where she is. about Kimmy, Laura. I'll be okay by myself. I'll just wait here.
I'm worried about Kimmy. Laura? I'll be okay by myself. I'll just wait here.
Mom, is that you? Oh, it's not. Please come in. Here, have some soup. So you've been to the house. You must have seen my son upstairs. He didn't uh, do anything bad to you, did he? <clears throat> Good. You see, I forced my own ambitions on him when he was just a little boy and wanted to play with his friends. I made him practice the piano every day, every day. Locked him in the cellar and forced him to play from morning till night. And finally, I brought him here to the middle of nowhere so he would have nothing but his piano. But as if that weren't enough, I gave him a drug called Linda. I wanted to give his fingers, his hearing, an extra touch of power. But it was the devil's medicine that I gave him. It put him on edge and brought out the worst in him. I saw it myself one day. I saw him in the barn playing. He was cutting rabbits and birds to pieces and laughing. He saw me, then approached me. Mom, he said, and he was holding a burning log in his hand. Mom, I can play the piano really well, he said. I can play really well, Mom. Are you happy now? Then I couldn't believe it. He shoved that burning log right into my face and burned me. And this is what happened. Oh, the agony. And only then did I realize for the first time what he had been through. What I had done to him. His pain. Oh, God, what am I going to do now? I don't know what to do. Could I interest you in some more soup? isn't it?
Welcome back. I thought you might return. If you truly are the child of destiny, there is something I must tell you. No man is truly evil or truly good. There is only the power of evil and the power of good, and all depends on how that power is applied. I know not whether you are the destined one, but I have told you what I needed to. Perhaps the human race has gone too far. It seems that my task in life is done. I shall wait here for the last candle to burn out. It is certainly as foretold. If you are indeed the child of destiny, my old heart is filled with joy. After all, I have lived so long just for this very moment.
Danny's disappeared again. When I wasn't looking. Where could she have gone? I'll go look for her. Okay. A oh, man upstairs is gone too. I, I don't know what's going on here. Unless... What a pretty butterfly. What's it doing in a place like this? I have to go. What's wrong? Oh my god. What the hell happened here? You better not hang around. Come on. Let's go back downstairs. You all right? I wonder where Janny went. I ran into Kimberly on the way back and she told me she took the snowmobile. You know? I think I have a better idea of what she's like after talking to her. Oh yeah, I found a stone bridge just north of here. The thing is, the gate is locked and will stay that way unless we can blow it with dynamite or something. It's really too bad. There's a large building in a mountain on the other side of the bridge. There's a weird red glow coming from the summit. I think there's something like an antenna up there. You can bet on it. It could be the source of the signal my team was tracking. I wish I could do something for Kimberly, you know? But she avoids me like the plague.
wait. I'm okay now. You must believe me. That sorcerer deceived me. He was just using me. Please believe me. I know I turned into a monster, but, but I'm okay now. I've got my mind back. And see, my, my, my body's back to normal too. Even if my blood's green, I'm, I'm still a human being. Is that what you want to kill? Come on, trust me. We're, we're both human, aren't we? It's okay. You can trust me. See, trust me. in our skulls. Don't remember anything else, just the, the buzzing, the, the buzzing in my head. 
You've got to stop him. He says he's fusing with the shadow, becoming one with him, to get the power to destroy the world. Said that the shadow's been asleep in Death Mountain up north for 65 million years. And now the meteor woke it up. You've got to stop him. Now that I've turned into this, this thing, now I realize that I've wasted my life. My wasted life. Dying feels kind of good. Thanks. Could you close my eyes? Laura, Laura Parton, I am the Great Mother. Awake, my child. The world has begun to turn inward upon itself. The sky will be above no longer. The earth below no longer. And mankind will be no more. Hurry, child, and arm yourself, or else the world will be no more. Fear not, and go forward in the name of the Great Mother, the Creator of all.
again. Scared the hell out of me. Almost gave me a heart attack. Let me guess. The yellow light again. It looks like an explosive. Wait. We may be able to blow that bridge gate with this. Let me hold on to it for a while. We just had some company. I mean, I guess we're the company, but... You know that guy upstairs? His mother came over. She went up to the second floor and still hasn't come down. Even though her weirdo son seems to have wandered off. I don't know what she could possibly be doing up there by herself.
Open the damn gate. We could cross to the other side, but I guess there's nothing we can do now except go back into the house. We still can't find Janny. I'm really worried about her now. Did you find anything, Parker? Hey, is that a time bomb? That should take care of the gate. Set it to go off in, say, well, it's from here to the stone bridge. 15 minutes should be long enough. Hey, just hold on a minute. We haven't even tested this thing yet. Test? Don't be such a wuss. Come on, hurry up. I have a gate to blow up. All right, all right. One, five, zero, zero. Okay, set to go off in 15 minutes. You start cutting it too close, just toss it. Please, just because it took you 15 minutes to crawl over there on a snowmobile doesn't mean the rest of us are that slow. Five minutes, that's all I need. You wanna bet me? I don't play those kind of games. <laughs> Have it your way. Well, I'm impressed. Ooh, I wasn't sure you could do anything. Give me a break. Well, I'm off then. Be good. <laughs> See you soon. Hey, what do you think of her? I, uh, to tell you the truth, I had my doubts about her at one point. I thought maybe she'd already gone floral, turned into a monster already. I guess I was wrong. She's got a monster inside, all right, but it's a far more terrible kind. It's called loneliness. Everyone has a measure of it inside but somehow she just can't learn how to keep it under control. And this loneliness is eating her up. Damn. Isn't there anything I could do for her? Maybe if I were a priest, I could offer her faith. If I were a warrior, I could protect her. I'm just, just me. I can't offer her anything. It's been days since that crash and I... Hey, what time is it? Holy shit! I didn't set it for 15 minutes. I set it for 1500 hours. Don't you see? I didn't set the thing to go off in 15 minutes. It's set for 3 p.m. There's only five minutes left. Kimberly! <sighs>
think you're doing? We have to blow this gate. What on earth is going on? What's with you? You said you wanted to help me. I was this close to getting killed. And if I had, it would have been all your fault. I'm so sorry. Engineer. Yeah, right. Murderer is more like it. So you think you can just do what you please with my life, is that it? You have no idea how glad I am to see you. Get out. It makes no difference to me whether you're here or not. Just get out of my sight. Just get out of here. Sorry about that. Can you do me a favor? This is kind of my lucky charm. I think it's better for Kimberly to have it instead of me. If you don't mind, could you please give it to her? I'm sorry. I know it isn't his fault. But I just went off anyway. Can I tell you something? <laughs> I lost my father when I was very young. He died and left nothing but a huge debt. Every day, the loan sharks would show up at the house, and every day, they would take it out on my mother. I'll never forget finding her that January morning. My mother killed herself. She put a bullet in her head. They showed up that day too. And then when they realized they could never lay their dirty hands on her ever again, they came after me. I grabbed the revolver from my mother's hand and I fired at them. I escaped through the window, and I ran away. And every night since, that morning has repeated in my dreams. The thing is, I started taking Linda to deal with my dreams. But I just can't deal with men anymore. I can't even face him in the same room. That's why when Parker said he just wanted to protect me, no man has ever said a thing like that to me before. I didn't know how to react, but I'm going to apologize to him in the morning. I know I can trust him. And this time, I'll stop pushing him away. I promise.
sorry. <sighs> Did I wake you? I'm, well, <sighs> writing a poem. I thought I'd show it to Parker. Do you think he'll read it? feel these stabbing pains throughout my body. Every time I move my head, every time I raise my arm, I get this constricting feeling. It's okay. It's okay. I'm fine. Oh, thanks. Don't worry about me. Oh, oh Laura. I'm supposed to... Oh, I'm supposed to take care of you. Oh. <laughs> but I... <laughs> but I... Morning, Laura. <laughs> Parker, I, um, uh, I'm sorry about last night. Stay away from me. <laughs> Look at this. I've somehow been infected. I'm still all right. I haven't blossomed yet. I'm still thinking straight. And I can make my own decisions for now. But it's only a matter of time and I can't risk harming you two. I gotta go. You can't. You'll be all right. You're not like the dinosaurs. You have this, and this too. Just know it's never too late. Being human means having free will, and the challenge is making the right choice. Nuclear power can be used to destroy cities or explore outer space. Drugs can be used to cure mental illness or escape from the world. The choices are yours. That's also true of what you do with your heart. Maybe humanity, every one of us as individuals, is being told it's time to grow up. I'll see you around. Don't die, either of you. No, wait. Mm. Maybe we could still find a cure. There's no need for you to just leave like this. Do you think you'll miss me when I'm no longer myself? Yes, I will. Will you remember me? Of course. Then, just smile for me. What? Smile for me, Kimberly. That's it. Come on, I, I know you can do it. Oh, Parker. Thank you, Kimberly. <laughs> You'll never be alone. I want to sleep. 
sleep last night after I wrote that poem for him. I never slept so soundly without taking Linda. And I had this dream. I dreamt that I was crossing that bridge with Parker. And on the other side was a fresh new world. A totally new life. Laura, where's that other bomb? <gasps> Did he?
I was so scared. Kimmy was acting weird to me. And that man upstairs too. She... Ah! Uh, you... It was you two who did that to my boy. To my Tom. Little monsters. Was it fun torturing him? I saw how you treated him. You fed on him, didn't you? Did he taste good? How did my little boy taste? <gasps> Come, I'll treat this little one like you did my son. I'll eat her down to the bone and enjoy every last bite. <laughs> Together. 
I'm trying to impress my own dreams ashes on you. Please forgive me. I was very good at raising you. I tried to impress my own dreams and ambitions on you. Please forgive me. Can you hear me? I tried to impress my own ambitions on you. Please forgive me. I was at raising you, was I? I bought the style of the animal you wanted. Don't, don't, can you hear me? I was very good at raising you, was I? Come on, don't. Steinway piano you've always wanted. I tried to impress my own ambitions on you. Please forgive me. The piano you've always wanted. Raising you was I. Come on, dog. Let's go together. I was very good at raising you was I. I tried to impress my own friends and ambitions on you. Please forgive me. The Steinway piano you bought. I tried to put my own dreams and ambitions on you. Please forgive me. The Steinway piano you always wanted. Tom, Tom, can you go? I wanted so much to play a duet with you, Tom. Please forgive me. <laughs> Laura, Laura, I'm so scared. That's what Kimmy did. She wasn't a monster, but she... I went upstairs because the door was open. And I saw Kimmy, and she was doing mean things to that man. And then Kimmy saw me. And she started chasing me, too. <laughs> That's why I, I went and hid. <laughs> so that's what's been happening. Anything, but if Janny says so, uh, I must have. Laura, I'm gonna find Parker and be with him. I'm 
I'm not alone anymore. I'm not afraid of the loneliness. No. Not anymore. Yeah. I wish I hadn't lived to do these things. But until just a few days ago, I had nothing to even regret losing. If... If I could go back in time and see myself the way I was, I would give her a, a hard slap across the face. Then I'd take her to meet you and Parker. And I would tell her, these are your friends, starting today. Laura, I've changed my mind. If I could just have another chance at life, I'd like to be reborn as myself. And I'd like to have you as my friend again. Promise? Would you be? <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm going now. Don't turn around, please. Please. There's no need to see me off. Remember, this isn't goodbye. We're friends. Friends for life. I don't know what to do. <gasps> Laura, don't ever leave me alone, okay? Please.
Marco really dead? I heard everyone talking. between the stars was called Courting Darkness. darkness. Adrift even from sorrow, what I see. the survivors turn letters from the sun Fall to ashes. Courting Darkness. From the inkwell of their veins, the survivors took to weaving words of abomination. instead armored the soul and the survivors made a fortress of their folly on the first day they made fire to burn the sky on the second day they made fire to burn the sea on the third day they made fire to burn the earth on the fourth day they made fires to burn the stars on the fifth day there was nothing on the sixth day there was emptiness so I count the roses. And on the seventh day, yeah, you appeared. You unchained the cage of things forbidden. And the darkness began to change. Strength began to course. And the strength began power. You swept a boat out into the swelling river and guided me across on a Heedless of the water's fearful source, severed from the markers of time. The smothering solitude thawed in your light and became a rising tree on a forgiving hill. The tree began a forest, and the forest called forth winged creatures that traced the contour of a heart as they flew. Reconstructing brightness long since forgotten. They overflow, fall from the sky, murmuring their light, crystallize. In the verdance of the trees, gather what falls from the sky, you cried. Fly, you cried. Fly, you cried. arrived, as life finally came to an end, as it started, they saw boundless joy, and they knew it was your doing. What you guarded in their stead is the brightness that shines within. What you guarded in their stead, I shall call love.
Laura, do you know who you are? You must learn the truth, for the evil one is giving himself to a fear for power even now. And together they shall become the shadow. Laura, you are the chosen one. You must awake. afraid of dying now. <clears throat> Laura, I want you to do something for me. Leave me here and go. You've got to stay alive. And there's nothing more I can do. I'm all... <clears throat> Please, Laura, don't look so sad. You have no idea how happy I've been s spending my last days with you. You kept me going. And that's why, more than anything else in the world, I want you to survive. The moment I saw you on that plane, I knew I had to keep you safe. I don't know why, but I just knew I had to. That's why, that's why you've got to survive. All I can offer now is to leave you with a smile. I wish I had something you could take with you. But I, but I,
You don't want to lose it. It's a precious gift from your mother, Laura. Parton Laboratory. Parton! That's the same last name as yours, Laura. This is the Lucy Parton Laboratory. The entire facility has been shut down. Only authorized personnel are permitted access. <laughs> this is the Lucy Parton Laboratory. The entire facility has been shut down. <laughs> Only authorized personnel are permitted access. Please state your name. Please state your name. This is... Laura. Laura Parton. DNA scan completed. Laura Parton, please enter. Laura Parton's last visit was 27 years ago. Your associate is not cleared for access. Please wait here. It's okay. I'll wait for you here. I know you'll come back. I'll wait for you. Lucy Parton Laboratory, I would like to welcome you to the Visitor Center. Please press any button for the information you desire. This facility houses the Lucy Parton Laboratory of the LPL Corporation and includes the Research and Development Division. The facility, which was moved here to Ultramarine City in 1971, consists of four separate wings. The Visitor Center, which also serves as the showroom. The Main Laboratory, where the actual research is conducted. The Parton Tower Office Complex, and the library, 
where all data is archived. The Lucy Parton Laboratory of the LPL Corporation was established by the Parton family in 1963. The primary objective of establishing this facility was to continue the research work in molecular biology and genetic engineering, particularly the field of cloning technology, initiated by then Chief Executive of the LPL Corporation and Director of Research, Dr. Lucy Parton. The cloning project was discontinued in 1974, several months after Dr. Parton was seriously injured in a laboratory accident. However, the facility continued to conduct research on agricultural applications of genetic engineering under a government grant until 1981. The genetic engineering technology researched and developed here by the LPL Corporation is still helping to feed the world by increasing the nutritional content of certain types of livestock and grain. Since 1981, only the Visitor Center Wing has functioned as a showroom for molecular biotechnology and genetic engineering. All proceeds from the center are channeled to various university research funds. Dr. Lucy Parton, Chief Executive of LPL Corporation and Director of the Lucy Parton Laboratory, was born in 1932 in Chicago, Illinois. After a brilliant and much accelerated academic career, she and her father, the well-known entrepreneur and former LPL Chairman Roy Parton, founded the Lucy Parton Laboratory in 1957, an institute dedicated to research in molecular biology, particularly the then-fledgling field of genetic engineering. Lucy Parton is especially well known for her work on mammoth cell cloning, a project that began in 1963 with the discovery of a perfectly preserved woolly mammoth found in the subarctic permafrost. Dr. Parton also left lasting marks in other fields such as medicine and agriculture before her life and work were cut short in 1973 by a research-related accident. data concerning this technology has been erased. Laura Parton, a level D plus key has been issued in your name. You may access the main laboratory.
You've come very far, Laura. I am Lucy, your mother. I've been waiting for you. Laura, I'm right here. I know that you've come very far, my beloved Laura. It all began 38 years ago, with a genetic memory, asleep in a wall of arctic ice. In 1963, I began working on a special project using cloning technology to bring mammoths back from extinction. My team discovered a perfectly preserved mammoth specimen in the winter permafrost of northern Canada in 1971 and we were able to extract genetic material from the cell nucleus. Unfortunately, there was too much chromosome damage. But we found something else. In the stomach of that frozen mammoth, we found the undigested remains of a totally unknown organism. Mammoths were believed to be herbivores, but this one anyway had apparently eaten another creature. And what a creature. It looked human, but had a pair of wings sprouting from its back. We removed him. Yes, the creature was male. From the stomach for further study. Then I decided that we would extract a sperm specimen and attempt fertilization using my ovum and in my womb. I decided to give birth to a hybrid child, fathered by this winged human. The fertilization was successful, but the embryo developed without a trace of wings. That made no difference to me. The child was the fulfillment of my dreams. A miraculous collaboration between me and that being we found inside the mammoth. The baby was born in the early hours of December 31st, under the most spectacular display of Aurora Borealis that winter. It was born across that span of time. I took the first letter of my given name and added the Latin word for air, aura, and named the child, Laura. It's true. That was how you entered this world, Laura. When I was in labor with you, I had a vision. Something akin to the will of the cosmos spoke to me and described something important. That a powerful spirit had appeared in the space-time continuum and was on its way to Earth from the far reaches of space and that it would arrive on Earth when my child had become a grown woman. At that moment, for the first time, I felt the enormity, even the sin, of what I had done. But at the same time, I saw in you the hands of fate. Then, seven days later, my own life ended. But others at this institute and the government wanted to repeat the experiment. They wanted to bring those winged human beings of prehistoric times back to life. They transferred my mind and will to this, to Zylo but without a compatible ova or a willing surrogate in which to bring the embryo to term, their efforts ended in failure. Look. <gasps> Laura, you must kill me. End your mother's torment so that no one will ever repeat this mistake. Do it now. While I still have my will.
Kill me, Laura. Laura. Kill me. joined himself to a fearful power and has been remade. The evil one knows you, my child, and shall seek you out. Go forward, Laura. You must not stop, no matter what.
I doing here? I want to go home. I want to go home now. It feels all wrong here. Hey, Laura, I discovered something. What matters most is time. I had a dream. Mm -hmm. There were big dinosaurs walking around. And then lots of people making buildings in the desert. There were some people on a ship crossing a big ocean. Then people were shooting at each other with guns. I saw big trees being chopped down and jet fighters in the sky. And then a really big, big explosion. There was a space rocket going straight up and astronauts hopping up and down on the moon. And animals getting shots in a lap. A big wave of water came and washed away a town. And a whole mountain caught on fire. There was something that looked like a forest, but it was all missiles instead of trees. It was kind of like when you fast forward a long movie. But I knew it wouldn't go the other way. And I thought that's what's really important. Time is the only thing that can't go back. It's kind of like a lesson. Like Grandpa teaches me.
Laura, Laura Parton, I am the Great Mother. Awake now, Laura, my child. And Laura, know the planet you inhabit. Know the time you move through it. Awaken the memories that sleep within you. Mother Earth, this is your home. Awake unto it. Laura, how many days has it been since the crash? Time just seems to fade into the distance for me now. It's strange, but I don't feel sad. The snow will soon cover my body. Time will cease to exist, and I'll disappear under the thickening layer of snow. And in that whiteness, all this will transform itself into water and earth. Over a longer period of time than I ever could have imagined. And maybe one day, I'll come back again as a very small flower. I'll blossom and grow. There's an interesting thought for you, Laura, don't you think? Me, as a plant? I've never so much as even had a plant in my apartment. But now I'm on my way to being reincarnated as one. Just think. Someday, someone may walk past me. They may be laughing or crying when they do or they may be full of hope or in deep despair. But it won't matter to me then because a flower doesn't care what it has or doesn't have. It just is protruding from the snow, waving in the breeze.
But it's different with you, Laura. You must survive. Don't worry about me. I'll be staying here, thinking of you, dreaming of you. Laura, it's okay. You can do it. If anyone can, it's you. I know that.
words, I will take your ears, and these words will be the last you ever hear. <gasps> How do you feel now? Grovel in fear. First you are blind. Then you are deaf. And now you will move no longer. Do you understand what that means? Death, it means death. The certain death that is yours, and you will be lost in the vast abyss for all eternity. I guess it's time to say goodbye. Oh, Laura, don't be sad. You'll be all right. It's okay. You'll be able to make it through. And look, I have something special to give you. Here it is. I hope you'll think of me every time you look at it. I've put it away in your keepsake. Laura, don't forget me. David. Well, I guess it's that time. Farewell. Goodbye, Laura.
this <laughs> What's happening? My body. My mind. <laughs> the pain. Stop it. <laughs> How could I? <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> Laura, now. Laura, 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 can you hear me? The evil here has been destroyed. You can move again now. Laura, the time has come for you to bond with that fearsome power. Though you cannot see nor can you hear, you must slowly go forward, my child. One step at a time. And with this new power, this unknown force, you will bring salvation. You, Laura, will save your world. Feel the earth underfoot, my child. Awaken the sleeping memory of your wings and believe in the power that lies in the palm of your hands. That power will grant you miraculous things. Now go, my child. Laura, child of destiny, born across the shores of time. Listen well, my child. You do not know that this apparently endless universe does not have an end. That time, so infinite to misleading senses, will one day stop. You know so little, for you are but a child, a newborn. You must journey forth again. And this voyage will be far longer and much more terrifying. Now is the time to find him. Do you remember? Do you remember the name of the one who saved you? It was he who safeguarded your soul. Go and find him, and thus forge that power at last into one. Laura, my child, call his name. Speak his name so that all lives and all that will be born shall be saved. Call him and recreate yourself as you were meant to be. Now, now, Laura. David.
You, uh, dropped this. Uh, here. You wouldn't want to lose it, Laura. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't help seeing your name on this. Ah, uh, and besides, I feel like we've met before. Well. <sighs> hey, that book you have. You read Kimberly Fox? I've read some of her work. I've never met anyone else who's even heard of her. She isn't widely recognized. At least, not yet. My favorite piece in this book is... this. This poem, Light. It's about a sort of hypothetical woman, the poet's imaginary best friend. This woman is... Oh, I get it now. That's why I felt like we'd met before. Ah, you remind me of her. For me, if that sounds strange, but, <laughs> well, it is strange. I highly recommend it. It's a wonderful poem. Everything Kimberly Fox writes is so filled with hope and love of life. Laura, look. Hmm? so beautiful. Well, anyway, I guess I'll be going. David!
might be outside Small.